All right, so what's going on guys? So I'm gonna give you guys some updates on current events, some thoughts, as well as just some scripture to encourage the body of Christ right now in uh, what's going on. A lot of people are just asking a lot of genuine questions of what's going on, what does the future look like? And if you followed me the last couple of videos or even just this past year, you know that I touch on the high level, the big picture and what God is doing in the world. I don't really talk about the details of you know, the news and what's going on and stuff like that. You can follow other people to get that kind of uh, information, especially within the uh, non-mainstream sources and that, uh, more importantly, that you have that discernment and you're able to pray through uh, that. So I encourage people to uh, get right with the Lord and to help uh, encourage you in your navigating of all of the things that's going on right now. And so I focused in on uh, I want to say a certain group of people that really get it and for others there's people that that are growing that are in different stages of of being awakened of uh, reaching a, a precipice of uh, ha having enough of what's going on in terms of satanic demonic tyranny over your spiritual life and then how that would apply a lot of times often uh, in the natural whether it's at uh, the government the local level, at the country level, the people group level, or more just uh, at, at sort of your personal level, right? If you're going through a suffering or a circumstance and things like that. And so I'm not here uh, to talk about counseling. I'm not here to talk about certain uh, specific uh, things that people go through, but rather to touch on sort of the things that may encompass a lot of people. And so you guys know that if you've been following me. Uh, today, and especially in the last few videos, I've been talking about the big battle that's going on in the world right now. And so a lot of people, if you follow some of what's going on, and especially as it's being triggered by the, uh, the anti-mandates uh, anti and sort of the, the freedom movements, the, the tyranny, the freedom convoy and things like that, you would know that even in the past year, a lot of countries, which doesn't get reported often enough, where millions of people are just taking the streets and demonstrating and having protests and, and uh, um, you know, these marches and things like that. And so you got things happening, obviously, in Canada. It's a big uh, topic across the world. You have people in Australia, Canberra, uh, and in New Zealand as well. You have the stuff that has happened in Europe, Paris. Uh, I think a lot of people are trying to converge in Brussels. Uh, you have uh, things in Vienna. And so a lot of dif uh, different things are happening. And so now even in America, you got people coming over, you have uh, different marches, I think something starting on the West Coast, moving to the East Coast and, and various things like that. And so a lot of that being a product of people sort of reaching this precipice, having uh, uh, enough of, of the tyranny and things like that and people waking up. And so I've been talking a lot about how people are using and experiencing things in the natural realm, which is just the things around us, the government, the country, the laws, things like that, in order to have a spiritual awakening. And so that's what I touch on in this channel and, and what I comment on. And so I'm going to get to that in a second. But I also want to encourage some people because right now you have a lot of the good people going on the offensive, a lot of what people would call the patriots or the digital soldiers. You got people that are the white hats, whatever name you want to call it, going against these other names, you know, the cabal, the deep state, the globalist, Illuminati, whatever you want to call it, right? And again, I'm not here to spew out, you know, all the different things that people talk about. But clearly, factually speaking, there is things going on. Uh, and again, in the natural is what I said, but in, in the news, if you follow some of the statements, some of the, the speeches, different things that are going on, you obviously see, you obviously have a lot of this rhetoric. And so a uh, big thing going on is this idea of diversion, false flags, and people getting their attention caught up in certain things that may not be as important, or may it may be uh, it may be uh, boosted up to be more important or sound more important than it might be. And so again, I've talked about how Christians need to get a prayer life. They have to be able to be operating in the spirit, and so that you can have a um, a wisdom and a discernment to see is there some meaning behind this? Is there something for which you can take at face value or is there other things behind it, a second layer of meaning, a third layer of meaning. A lot of people are reacting to this Russia invading Euro, uh, Ukraine thing. I personally think, dude, that's uh, not necessary in that Russia is not going to in invade Ukraine. There's other things going on. You have the EU, 
staffers being encouraged to leave, you know, Ukraine and things like that. And so you have to wonder, like, what is it that they're doing? What is going on? Is there a diversion, a tactic being set on, you know, certain things? You have the Olympics, you have Super Bowl, you have all these different things for which people have their focus on as opposed to not covering other things, right? Like millions and millions of people marching, right? As well as some of the other more subtle things that are going on. And I've said before that Trump and the White Hats and the Patriots and even the military, if you want to call it, uh, and, and especially Durham, they're going on the offensive. And so if you if you watch some of, and I've been, I've been trying to keep up a little bit more than usual, but if you watch a lot of the interviews and, and some of the words that Trump is saying, as well as some of the statements that are coming out, uh, out especially from the, the case, the special counsel case and the, with Durham, John Durham, and then the grand jury and all this stuff, you can see that something's brewing. And uh, John Durham recently sent out a memo. And one of the things about the memo uh, that was very striking is that he was mentioning there's evidence with the Sussman case, the Perkins Coie um, lawyers, and then Joff and these other guys that he's targeting. So obviously there's something that is being done with regards to more indictments. Uh, John Dur or rather uh, John Ratcliffe, DNI John Ratcliffe, talking, retweeting about the 1,000 documents that he gave Durham and how there's more indictments that he says would be coming. And so a lot of things are happening right now for which a lot of coverage isn't being done there with regards to Hillary and then the connection to you know, all these different things, right? The Steele dossier, the uh, hoax, the Russia hoax, uh, Cash Patel recently making a statement about, you know, this uh, using strong language uh, and 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 saying that Clinton orchestrating the fabrication of these things um, and all of this Spygate stuff, and so a lot of strong language is coming out from from these guys and Trump also uh, getting very vocal about the fraud, about the um, you know and other people talking about the decertifications. The continued investigations into fraud and, and 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 various other things, right? And so again, I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and especially with regards to the grand jury. And so all these these sealed indictments and sealed documents that have to be used for the grand jury and not being the evidence of, especially in the cyber space, of that not being presented is being withheld. And I think there's a huge offensive that's obviously playing out right now. And I'm talking facts here because this is these are. These are memos, these are, are speeches, these are, are things that are actually happening in the court system and the cases. And so, again, big offensive here. And more uh, surprisingly, and I touched on this yesterday, is that Trump is consistently dodging questions about 2024 and about being voted as Speaker of the House and all that stuff. And he would say things like, you know, we'll see what happens about the future, you know, the path that they're on, the, the plan that they have is good and hopefully won't lead to other things and that they're you know, considering everything, but it's just a very canned answer in terms of not being straight about what's going on. And he he keeps saying that uh, you're going to be very happy. You know, you're going to be very happy about what's happening. And so, again, I, I take these things and really try to sense and and in the spirit say, man, what what is going on? That is, again, in this fog of war, this information war that we're in. And so, right now, I say that as an encouragement because. For many of us, we don't have that discernment. A lot of people, they don't have that discernment. If you if you are following all that and you are in my camp of understanding and discerning, then you know what I'm talking about. But also God has given an opportunity for many people to have their faith tested for you to get right with him. And then more importantly, to be able to really discern what's going on in this sort of mysterious thing that that is going on in the world. So how to discern what is happening around us and how to respond. And so, again, uh, many things I think are going on. And also, let me mention the vaccine documents, man. So a lot of things are very sus in, in that space. So the court ordering these documents that are, you know, they had supposedly like 70 some years, 75 years for it to be sealed, but then it being ordered uh, in terms of um, the, the documents, the trials and all the things that were, were notations to be released, right? And then there's something up with uh, Mod uh, Moderna, the CEO. He, you know, nuked his Twitter account and he sold millions of dollars of his stock. And so there's stuff going down in that space. So again, I've talked about exposure. I've talked about how a lot of things that are being in the secret 
uh, that these things are coming out. And so truth is coming to light, indictments, justice, all these things are coming to light. And I've also given, you know, that prophetic dream about how everything has to kind of, you know, all these people are one by one showing themselves, confessing and, and, and Trump and, uh, you know, people monitoring this and then for everything to come together so that there's, there's something that as a huge swift uh, uh, act of justice, things will happen in a, uh, a quick sequential manner, right? And so things are happening and I think that offensive is being taken now and I talked yesterday uh, yesterday about how I think it would be before this 2022. Again, all of the prophetic words, all of the things necessary for us as a body of Christ, as believers, and as non-Christians who are waking up to God. I read a comment the other day about how in Canada, so many people are coming to know Christ. And, and again, across the world, right, there's a revival going on as we speak. Because without this kind of stuff in your face, these things that are at your doorsteps, if they don't rock you, if they don't, uh, you know, shake you, if they don't test you, if they don't give, you know, uh, an, uh, a problem to your life, then you won't be able to ask questions, you won't be able to grow, you won't be able to go through the heat, and the heat is turned on really hard right now. So again, a lot of people just, just in battles of all sorts of things, economic hardship, you know, business, uh, things, the education system, you know, the, the health system, and just many things that are going on in the world. People are waking up because God is shaking everything. He's shaking things and removing things for which a lot of people had put a lot of trust in, a lot of attention to, uh, you know, v uh, viewer ratings for a lot of these, you know, networks, even the Olympics, many things are going down. People are not focused on these things anymore. And so again, you got everybody trying to tell you, hey, look at this area, watch this, listen to me, listen to that. But yet, uh, God is waking up people and he's opening people's eyes so that they can see and grow in their wisdom, right? And so if you think about it, a lot of people in the world, they're at different places and not everybody's going to receive this wisdom at the same time. Not everybody's going to be able to see through you know, the antics and all these different things that's going on, discern through the news. They're not going to come to the realization, the awakening, all at the same time. And many people, quite frankly, they're not going to wake up either. They're not going to understand. They're not going to be able to really discern between misinformation uh, with, you know, intentional, uh, you know, um, I guess white hats doing, uh, uh, you know, spreading out uh, these psyops or other things, black hats and bad people actually doing bad things and saying that it's a good thing. You call good versus a uh, good evil and evil good, as the Bible says, and all these different things that people are trying to figure out. And so I have a passage for you guys that I want to read uh, to you guys, and I think it's very applicable. And so we're in a time now, and again, my audience and some of you guys that are listening, a lot of you guys are Christians, a lot of you don't agree on the news and how to discern it, a lot of people don't agree with how to respond and things like that. And so again, I talk about your perception of reality, a lot of people are anchoring their, their knowledge and their truth on something that isn't actually factual and, and uh, instead they're listening to people for which they tell you, no, this is baseless. No, this is not right information. No, that's conspiracy. Oh, no, that's a bunch of fringe, fringe people that are thinking that stuff. And so instead of going to the Lord about it, a lot of people, they want to believe what they want to believe. And so they're caught up in deception and wickedness. And so again, I'm not saying that they're bad people. It's just that they're not open and privy and they may have a time later for which they are able to come to that realization. And what God is doing is he's working all these different things out. I talk about group one, group two, group three people. A lot of people will be awake quickly. Others will wrestle with it. And other people, it'll just frankly take quite a long time. And maybe years, decades later, they, they will finally realize, wow, looking back, I see where my, my flaws were. And so, guys, if you go to a church, if you go to a Bible study group, if you even look at your family, everybody's at a different maturity level. And so in grace and in love, I say this, but you talk about a certain topic, not everybody's going to realize what who God is, his grace in, in a situation, his love, his mercy in a situation, his insight, his wisdom in a situation. And so again, God's preparing people's hearts for their own path of coming, coming around, of waking up, of realizing, of growing in all of their understanding. And so this is not to uh, you know, belittle or marginalize people, but some people are not ready and they're immature, they have a, a narrow, a mindedness and they don't see other things and I, I say that for myself in many areas of life right and so again i'm not old uh and wise in my years in the sense that i have 
you know, 40, 50, 60 years of life under my belt. And so some people, they experience things over time and you get to learn things. And for me, thankfully, God has opened my eyes to many things and I'm here uh, in confidence giving this to you guys. And so some people, they're not gonna uh, receive it well. And, and that goes for any topic. Somebody's not gonna know about, you know, the love of God and, his, and Christ's sacrifice for your life until people really understand what sacrifice means. They don't know what redemption is. They don't know what sanctification is. They don't know uh, God's patience on someone's life until they experience and go through something themselves. And so, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it applies very well for this time. And again, there's a lot of confusion. A lot of people are taken aback by people that uh, don't really, you know, have, um, you know, everything together. There's no story. It just doesn't make sense. So God is really speaking to us as a body of Christ in this time to be able to understand or grow in your desire for understanding, though you may not necessarily understand fully everything. Chapter 2, uh, verse 1, it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So right there you can see that in all of this, everything that's happening, everybody told you, no, don't, don't uh, believe in this. Uh, there's alternative medicines. Oh, the, the vaccine this and that. Oh, no, don't look at the uh, steel dossier. Don't look at this. Oh, no, don't look at blah, blah, blah. And all of these things were, were done in some sense without uh, convincing words. But God was using all of this first to get you to be confused, to be even upset, so that you can seek God first, to have uh, knowledge of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And because all these people, whether it's in weakness of speech and weakness of, uh, of you know not being persuasive or whatever it is, he was using this to anchor people, to wake them up spiritually, to get to a better place of knowing God. And then from there, when you have your foundation, he opens up other things to you and saying, wow, that person, even though he sounded really weird and dumb, I guess he was right about that political you know, agenda or that um, hoax or whatever it was that people are talking about, right? And so later on, you see thing with masks, right? Being effective and all that. More will come out with the vaccines. We'll see, right? It's all this stuff. And the next verse, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the elders of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And of course, talking about crucifixion, talking about God, talking about all these different things, but the message, the underlying tone of, of uh, the essence of the human heart, their mind and their perception of the world and, and taking in information and having spiritual wisdom is common. So a lot of people, it's a mystery, it's hidden, and they, they quite frankly, they see something, they hear something, they don't understand. And so God is preparing, like I've said, different people at different stages for, for your eyes to open, your heart to open, for you to, to come to a realization each to their their own, uh, each uh, to their own ability, right, and their own timing. Verse ten. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of, of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have re uh, received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So again, I've said parts of this verse before, 
but we need to take on the mind of Christ. We have to take on the Spirit, and we have to be able to discern and see through the Spirit. Otherwise, we're just going to have these camps of people arguing and shouting and things like that. If you go into a Bible study group, no one's shouting about depression and saying, no, your view of depression is wrong. No, your view of you know, uh, the sufferings of, of hum human humanity is wrong. No, your interpretation of this passage is wrong. People are not doing that. They want to take on the mind of Christ to be able to, to, be able to see it, even if they haven't experienced it themselves. They haven't experienced what, you know, uh, losing somebody, your loved one is like, or, or not having a job or going through economic hardship and financial difficulty, whatever it is, people want to give grace. They want to allow people to speak and to experience that. But so many of us, we're taking, you know, the information that we have. We, we think we can read two or three articles and then say we know something. And then we go out and we make strong conclusion, uh, conclusions and saying, no, 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 you're wrong about this and that. Oh, no, 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 no. And so God is testing us in this time for, uh, for all of us to be able to see, do we want to search out the, the spirit? Do we want to uh, search out and have the, the mind of Christ as opposed to taking, you know, two or three things that we think is, is fact about, you know, the Russia and Ukraine situation or about the vaccines and about, you know, COVID and, and you know, about all these different things about Trump and what he's doing and all the, every single thing that's coming. Again, people are so stuck on, oh, I read one article and I know that Trump is, you know, flushing things down the toilet and doing all these weird stuff and aha, I knew it, I knew it. But again, if you want to take on the mind of Christ and then being able to discern and see and understand, that's what God is testing in this time. But yet so many people, time and time again, they're not wanting to do that. They want to believe what they want to believe. They want to just have the cheap and easy way out of thinking they can get you know, a couple of articles, watch a couple of news programs, watch a couple of uh, videos, and then think they have the whole situation. And then they argue so hard. They argue so hard for their side and their position, thinking they're right. But yet, what, yet when, you know, actual truth comes out, the indictments, evidence, fraud, you got, you know, the grand jury, you got many things coming up. And that's what, I, that's why I've been proclaiming that you got to uh, stay in, in, in the spirit. You got to be uh, mindful of uh, of your relationship with God and, and Christ, but also that uh, as a word of encouragement, whether I want to say this prophetically, whether I want to say this as a corporate body of Christ and a declaration, that things that are happening right now, the things that God is doing to open up and to really bring justice, swift justice, and opening things up for this fog of war, this cloudy thing that's happening right now to be removed, that's what's happening. And I'm so excited for that. And right now we're being tested. So if you are a Christian, whether you don't understand, whether you uh, don't agree even, I would say, what harm is it for me to advocate and to say, let's pray, let's get to the, uh, the uh, maybe we don't fully understand everything, but uh, uh, in due time for you to allow the Spirit to reveal things to you and for you to be able to get right with Him because things are happening. And if you're not aligned with God, if you're not aligned, in unity with the body of Christ of what's going on, then you're going to be in the back burner. You're going to be uh, in the rear view mirror in some sense. And so guys, it's a, it's a huge time. I'm advocating as a loving brother. I'm not trying to uh, inject whatever, you know, um, ideologies, human thoughts, but I'm trying to say, hey guys, let's get to the bottom of this together and let's uh, have God at the center of all of this and let him take care of things. So. God bless you guys. Love you guys. And I'll talk to you guys very soon.